It's so interesting learning about how plant hunters went on expeditions for kings and queens. They brought back specimens for royal gardens. But not only did they bring back specimens to be grown in gardens, they brought back new medicines, new spices for food, dyes for textiles, and even makeup. Some of the lessons that we've learned from those early botanical explorers we're still using today. I'm Dr. Domingo Bisco, an educator here with the Botanical Research Institute of Texas in Fort Worth. And in this episode of GR's STEM U, we're gonna learn how the pioneers of the past are connecting with modern day plant hunters. We came here to Fort Worth to the Botanical Research Institute of Texas. Let's go explore the herbarium now with local plant hunter and collections manager, Tiana Raymond. The herbarium acts as a library of plant specimens. It warehouses over one million plant specimens. These specimens were collected by scientists. Some specimens are over 200 years old. Similar to books in a library, each specimen is cataloged and stored by its genus and species name. It's also labeled with information on the conditions at which the plant was collected. Let's listen as Tiana explains the process of collection and how a sample ends up in the herbarium. I get to practice preservation techniques, field collecting scientific techniques by collecting the plant in the field, by collecting all the kind of information that's important and that may be important for somebody 200 years from now to know about this plant. Where was it collected? What date was it collected on? Who collected it? Um, what was it growing with? Did it have a smell? Um, what color were the flowers? Did it have flowers? All that information is extremely important. So I will go out, make that voucher, dry it, press it. It will go through a freezing process and then it will be brought into the herbarium. Why do we freeze it? because I want to make sure that there are no insects coming in with the collection that will eat that plant or that will eat any of the other plants here. Cold, dry, airtight, those are some of the things that I do to help take care of the specimen. And it's not me alone, it is a team of us that work here in the herbarium at Brit for this effort. A part of that team effort is digital coordinator, Joseph Lippert. He explains how a specimen gets turned into a digital image for the internet. So the imaging process for a material starts after each specimen has been checked, um, given any needed repairs if they're a particularly old specimen, and each are given a unique barcode so that we can identify the specimen and its digital data and combine them in future steps. We then give them a date stamp so we can track the process. We place it in the box, hit the shark, and remove it. Just as quick as taking a photograph. After the imaging process, we use uh, Lightroom to edit the photographs. We uh, check for white balance and exposure. Much of what we're doing is not necessarily uh, curating or preserving the image of the plant, but the, uh, the label that's on the specimen. Because we're not getting rid of these specimens. If someone really wants to look at them, they can either visit the herbarium in person, or we can physically mail the specimens to them. Because there's just details that botanists or other scientists might be interested in that you cannot check for uh, through an image. Let's join Tiana now in the plant preservation studio 
as she explains the information collected about each specimen. So this specimen was collected in 1950. It was collected by a botanist who developed the collection that's now at Brit, Dr. Lloyd Herbert Shinners. He collected it on the 23rd of April in 1950. And get this y'all, this was his 12,000th, 265th collection that he had made. So this is what we call the primary label. If you have a plant specimen without its label, it is useless to us. Botanists do not always have the answer. What the herbarium is, it's like a library. I think I know what I have. If I think I have some ideas, I can go to the library. I can go to my herbarium and I can look at the specimens there and look at what they see, what they look like what their morphology and shape is, and I can compare it to what I have. And I can say, well, is it the same thing or is it different? I don't know, you know, maybe it was growing in sun or shade. In the herbarium, I have maybe 50 of the same plant species growing in different conditions in different places. So all of a sudden, I can compare my one plant, not to just one example, but to 50 of them or 100 of them. Back in the herbarium, Tiana explains how plant specimens from 200 years ago can help scientists of today. So it can do interesting things. It can tell us about invasive species when they started coming into our country. About diseases. You can look at the diseases on some of the plants that were collected and see how it moves. You can look at them for DNA analysis. So it can tell you about how these plants are related to each other and how they're related to their environment. Tiana explains how a missing sample from Montague County could affect the research of modern day plant hunters. So I've just discovered something rather interesting. It looks like this species, we don't actually have a specimen from Montague County where I was out in the field last week. If you put them all on a map, well, you wouldn't see any specimens or any of that species in Montague County, Texas. Why does that matter? Well, this is information. This tells us where this plant grows. As we're facing changes, climate change, we need to know what these species are doing. We need to understand our own environments now so that we can predict what they can do, so that we can conserve them, and we can plan for the future. Herbaria exist all around the world. So even though we don't have a specimen of that species from that county, maybe the University of Texas at Austin has one, or maybe Oklahoma State University has one. So. What I will do now is I'll go online, look at those herbarium databases online, and see if I can find any records from Montague County. Why do we do this? These specimens go back 200 years. How do we know what life was like 100 years ago, 200 years ago? These specimens tell us what was growing there. It tells us also a little bit about who collected it and what kind of social conditions existed when they collected those plants. The number of projects you can do with these is infinite and I challenge you guys to think about what can you do if you have specimens that go back 200 years, you have one and a half million of them from all around the world, what kind of questions can you ask? I would hope you enjoyed us today and our tour of the herbarium and learning about all of the tools that modern day plant hunters use in their research. Join us again on the next episode of Green Revolutions STEM U. If you want to learn more about what inspired this episode of STEM U, check your local library for these books.